Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Aries. If Aries is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, knock, knock, knock. Let's see what we have going on here tonight, Aries. I hope you all are doing well. We've had some pretty, uh, pretty what's the word um switching weather <laughs> um it's can't decide what it's doing here it's warm and sunny and then a few minutes later it's cloudy and rainy all right let's take a look at our card okay we're back to the south deck back home <laughs> Where we're nice and comfortable. Um, this week we have the Five of Cups, which is related to disappointment. Um, but the good news is this is probably a disappointment that has already come to pass. And this is much more about the things that you have learned from your disappointing situation. How has that changed you? How has that reshaped your um, life experience? How you view the world? How you um, deal with uh, the ups and downs? Okay, let's take a look and, and see what this um, what this tea, tea leaf bowl has to say. Now, I want to start off by saying there are a lot of sevens in here. Um, I noticed that we had a seven here. Um, where are the other ones? I did see some more, I promise you. Um, oh, yes. Okay, so we have a seven here. That's two sevens. Another seven over here. This little seven... So we have a lot of repeating seven. Seven seems to be um, a really important number for you in this upcoming cycle of events. So keep an eye out for that. All right. So I want to start with, we have a couple of interesting ones. Maybe um, I'm going to look at this one. So we have a bowl with the horns here in this nice standing position. It looks like it has maybe a baby bowl standing on its back. Okay, so to me, this is all about uh, kind of the growth, uh, the um, that little inner child bowl. <laughs> and growing into the uh, kind of larger, um, more robust, mature. Um, and now, what does is, what is the bowl kind of bring to mind as far as attributes? Uh, of course, we think of a charging bowl, um, dominant, um, very, uh, has a lot of stamina, uh, kind of very virile, um, robust, and um, maybe hard-headed a little bit, but great leadership, um, you know, emotional, an emotional being, okay? Um, and for me, looking at this, it makes me think that during this kind of resurgence of the memory of an old disappointment, um, maybe contemplating that or something has kind of triggered some of uh, 
some of the coping mechanisms, old feelings, um, things that kind of got conditioned into you because of this disappointment. Um, I think that this is something that must be from like that childhood time, time period. And it's kind of whatever happened um, seems to have kind of affected you um, all the way into adulthood, um, wherever you are on the timeline there. Um, and because it's kind of standing on the back of this ball, I think that, um, I think that this is kind of almost, it's kind of something that has become, um, very valuable and it's helped you with some of the ways that you've been able to navigate your life. But at the same time, it's something that, uh, maybe can be like on the borderline of overreaction or something that kind of t like takes over and sends you into a bit of a spiral at times. Okay, so I want to I want to look around and see kind of maybe um, what are we looking at? What it what is this possibly related to? Okay. <clears throat> and you will hear my cats roaming around. I'm trying to give them another chance and keep the door open for them. We'll see how that plays out. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple of things here. I have this, I have this squirrel, which I'm always gonna go with the squirrel because I love a squirrel. We have a little squirrel here and um, the squirrel, to me, always, I mean, it incites that busyness, that kind of um, uh, going out, gathering resources, making sure that you are ready for the long haul. Um, you are very kind of um, aware of um, your domestic situation, your financial situation. Uh, but also can be a little bit flighty in your intention. So similar to the hummingbird, um, who is a busy, 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 but, um, also, also has this ability to, um, you know, consider maybe is not great in the present all the time kind of uh, gets distracted easily, startled easily, but is very concerned about the longevity of things. Okay, so that's kind of, it seems like two things that maybe don't go together, but somehow they do. Um, and I think that, I think that this kind of is, mm, this is bringing to my mind, and this is, I kind of was thinking about this from the beginning a bit, is that with whatever is going on with this kind of um, re reoccurrence of, or height, like a heightened reaction of something that has to do with ch a childhood event or um, just maybe kind of, the environment, the the configuration of your childhood, um, the tone of it, or just something to do with how you experience childhood. Um, it doesn't have to be like one single thing. It doesn't even have to be an ongoing thing. Just kind of, you know, where you were at, what, how you ex how you yourself experienced it. Um, maybe it was totally. Um, you know, stable and consistent and, and safe and, you know, productive <laughs> and you learned a lot and you, you know, whatever, but that doesn't mean that you didn't, um, sometimes have troubles, 
um, in the way that you experience life, you know, and, um, and, you know, that's something that, that maybe gets overlooked sometimes for people. You think that usually it's, oh, you had trauma or, you know, you're, something terrible happened when you were a kid. It doesn't always have to be like that. So, um, anyways, with the, with seeing the squirrel, I think that this is going to be something where we talk about, um, mindfulness, um, mindfulness exercises. I also see above it, there's a whale. Okay. And this is like the real, um, <laughs> the very psychic spiritual wisdom, um, uh, a very kind of, um, kind of thoughtful, mindful creature, right? And so whenever I see the whale as one of the symbols, I think, okay, so this is like somebody who is, um, kind of slowing down, getting into, um, a place where they're feeling more connected with their environment. They are probably very, um, like family, family forward, uh, very much about their kind of little pod or tribe or crew or whatever of family members and friends, chosen family. Um, and so I feel that maybe there is sometimes a shifting or vacillating between these two places, but I think that, um, what's going to be important for you is really, um, intentionally, uh, working on some of that mindfulness. So, um, things like, you know, breathing, intentional breathing, very, I mean, it seems simple, but, um, it can be something that, uh, is very, very helpful. Um, they have lots of apps, a lot of different, um, you know, schools of thought and techniques, something that I definitely, um, think that you should look into. Um, another one that comes to mind is something called body scanning. So this is when you kind of sit down in um, a comfortable posture. It could be laying down if that's you know, on your back, on the floor, or couch or something. You could be in a sitting posture. You close your eyes, you're breathing, and you go from your head, the top of your head, slowly down all the way, and you're focusing on how your body feels. What feels comfortable, what feels uncomfortable, um, and you're noticing your breath as you're doing this in and out, right? Very ryth rhythmic. And you're noticing as your body kind of comes out of that stressful place. Okay. So I think that, um, and there are other, there are definitely other mindfulness practices. And we've talked about those in other readings. Um, you can easily kind of pull up a list of the major ones. There are a lot of, um, very creative ones that people post online and, um, and, uh, you know, I think that it's, it's kind of a fun journey, um, uh, trying out different kinds of, um, mindfulness practices or stimming, okay, to maybe manage some anxiety, stress, overstimulation, um, and, uh, I think that, I think getting into a practice, even if it's only, you know, doing breathing for a couple of minutes a day, um, or whatever, that can be really helpful. Um, just doing that intentional, uh, bringing down of kind of the vibration level, the frequency, um, you know, it, you literally change how, you are experiencing your environment um, and whatever situation that is coming up that 
these feelings, these memories, these uh, old hurts, these old disappointments, they very much live in our bodies. And I know that book, what is it called? Our body keeps, what is it called? Our body keeps the record or keeps the score. Our body keeps the score. Um, that book's been mentioned a lot lately in popular culture, I've noticed. And um, or that's a really interesting book to look into but it's true our body holds our traumas holds our stresses and um as we go through these things in our life uh we create um kind of a a, a default reaction or cope a coping mechanism to certain kinds of situations and when our mind body recognizes something we're like okay this is similar to that thing so I'm going to react to it in this way um that's something your body has like written into it so we have to practice um these things like mindfulness and the breathing and um you know, de-escalating our thinking and um, anxiety and that kind of thing so that we can try to override some of these things that have been written into our, you know, body psychology or um, psychic space, our psychology and all of that. Hi, TG, my cat is <clears throat> up here talking to me. Okay, so... Uh, let's take a look. We have a mermaid. I've had so many mermaids lately. This one is actually one of the most clear mermaids I've had. So we have the arms, we have the we have the head here, we have the nice tail, and it's even kind of um, split there on the end. So a really nice mermaid image. Um, now, sometimes the mermaid is kind of the siren, right? Um, and, and we all know the siren is the creature. Um, sometimes it's a bird where it's kind of more like a harpy. The half half woman, half um, half bird, or half half woman, half fish. Um, but the and and what does that do? They call. They sing. They sing their beautiful songs. They call out in the night to. Um, the sailors and the sailors, they turn their ships towards the sound and they, um, they take their boats right into the cliffs. Um, I don't think that this is that kind of mermaid. <laughs> um, the mermaid could also represent, and then, you know, uh, as I've said in some of my comments, when people are talking about wanting to read tea leaves or asking for, um, any kind of guidance about how to get started. The important thing is that these symbols, um, you be, you create personal relationships with them. So what, you know, one person reading tea leaves might, um, kind of elicit from a, a symbol or a formation. Another one might have a completely different take on it. So keep that in mind. But the the mermaid could also be um, a very much like a spiritual being that is kind of swimming in that beautiful um, kind of endless ocean of the unconscious or um, just kind of that higher spiritual realm. And so I really think that... I get this, my cat, I'm sorry. I get this feeling that um, there is this kind of strong desire to be very much immersed in um, just a really potent spiritual experience. If you could imagine, right, being this beautiful, this beautiful uh, mermaid, fish person, um, kind of swimming through uh, the abyss of endless spiritual depths, right? Um, 
kind of an infinite po potential, which we all have, right? But it's hard to access that sometimes. Um, but if you can imagine yourself kind of swimming through this, um, I think that uh, when you can really align your mind in such a way where um, that becomes a real, uh, a real possibility or a real um, perception, a real sensation, uh, then it's easier to kind of um, dwell in that place, activate whatever it is that you are wishing to, to activate. And so um, my thinking here is to find a situation um, that is accessible to you where you are feeling spiritually immersed. And this could be something that comes to, my, to mind for me is going to uh, like a concert where it's loud <laughs> and you can feel the you can feel the um, vibrations of the music where you are among other people who are partaking in this kind of altered state of consciousness that is brought about by um, you know, the, the rhythm of the music, the feeling of the music, the atmosphere that's created by the frequencies of the music. And, you know, depending on what kind of, uh, music venue or music you're seeing, the actual visual experience can be very altering as well. Um, getting you into, um, this kind of, uh, deep spiritual space. Um, other things that come to mind, I mean, and this is because I'm just like, you know, I'm really into movies, art, and music. Those are my big things. <laughs> so um, going to a movie that really takes you in, it's kind of a reprieve from reality, okay? Um, going to kind of um, being guided out of the normal mundane consciousness by um, something so immersive. Sitting in a dark room with a collective of people who are strangers, but you're all kind of experiencing the same thing. You're on the same boat, right? And um, and that's a, that's a really interesting feeling to be transported collectively. Uh, so I think that something like this might be um, interesting to go and try. Um, you know, other things you could do are art. Um, you could obviously go on like uh, a nature walk, go camping, l actually go swimming, take yourself to the ocean, to the lake. Um, maybe one of those sensory um, deprivation type places, um, something like this. I think just really the, there is quite an instinct arising in you to want to be fully immersed. Okay. Um, now I want to turn this. I want to look at this one. This one is really interesting to me. It looks like, um, maybe a dog, and it looks like it almost has a halo over it. And this is kind of in this emotional place here on the side of the bowl, which I reserve for things that are in the front of the mind, something you're thinking about a lot, something that is emotional, something that is psychic, okay? And I feel that this has to do probably with uh, a beloved animal, um, probably a dog, canine of some kind. And it seems like maybe they passed away at some time. Um, you, maybe it's an anniversary, maybe this happened recently. I think this is really heavy on your heart right now. Um, this might have some relationship with uh, these other feelings that are bringing up child, you know, these childhood, um, with the, with the bowl over here, it's kind of childhood, uh, memories, feelings from sensations, impressions of your childhood. Um, 
Maybe this was a dog that you grew up with or an experience you had with a dog as a child. Um, I think that that's important. I think that um, I kind of, I would kind of almost feel like this is a good time to honor this relationship, this animal, um, this beloved being in some way. Okay, and I know some people might think it's silly. Um, I'm a, you know, if, if you watched any of my other readings, I'm a big animal lover person. I love all things animals. <laughs> watching them, talking about them, reading about them, um, and so on. But, um, I, I think it's, you know, uh, so it can, people can minim, minimize your grief when you lose, um, a beloved, you know, spirit partner who happens to be an animal, um, because we're just kind of the world we live in. Um, although I think that it's gotten more and more within kind of the popular culture, um, normalized to have these deep relationships and to, um, you know, kind of raise up our relationships with our fur family. <laughs> so I don't think it's that outside of the realm of strange, but even if this is an animal that passed away, you know, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, maybe five years ago, whatever, um, I think that it's totally reasonable to con continue to honor them, maybe have some kind of ritual or remembrance for them, uh, maybe create some kind of artwork for them. And um, I think that, you know, doing do any kind of ritual for the for those who have passed um animal human or otherwise uh or creating some kind of artwork for them is very cathartic okay i mean that's a big reason why we have ritual in life um and ritual is very important for human beings um collectively individually so I think that this would be maybe something to consider for yourself. Okay, let's see. Okay, and so we're looking at this one. And it's really a lovely, it's a lovely formation. Um, it kind of looks like uh, some kind of maybe a parent, um, definitely a larger figure, and it's holding on to a smaller figure. So it makes me think of like a holding on to a baby. And then we have a little heart here. Okay. Um, I just, I what really comes up for me is just this closeness with um, maybe if you've had a child or you are thinking you're thinking of having a child. Uh, I feel like this is a. I feel like you're really going through a nostalgic phase right now. Um, I feel like you're really kind of whatever is going on in these last couple of weeks or what will be going on pretty soon. Um, he, there's a lot of reflection happening. Okay. And, and I feel that it's some of it's melancholy. Some of it's really deeply touching. Um, there's really a lot of warmth and, um, I feel like just a, like a warm, cozy hug, you know? Um, and I, you know, I just feel like there's really, and maybe this is part of the transition of seasons that are happening. Um, but I just feel like you're really in these memories a lot. I see, I see you kind of, um, in your quiet moments in your kind of in between moments throughout the day when you're with yourself, kind of drifting back to these different 
places. And I think that, you know, it's, it's emotional, but I think that it also feels nice. I think that, you know, you, and for tell from going back to your other readings, I feel that a lot of times you are so busy, you know, pu pushing forward, very busy life, very busy lifestyle, um, kind of not, not that you're not reflective, but you don't indulge a lot of um, looking back on things, um, lamenting, uh, you know, yearning for, being nostalgic. Um, there's not a ton of that that goes on. So um, it's interesting that there is really this kind of um, this kind of vibe going on in your life right now. Um, and I think that, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing. Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's something that we all do and it's, um, some of us more than others. And, um, you know, I do believe that, you know, with the mindfulness practices, I think that's a good way to kind of, it's like the eject button when it starts to get overwhelming. Okay. Um, it's a good kind of grounding way to gr get into a more grounded state. Um, but I also think when you're going through these kinds of periods of your life, it's a good time to write down some of the stuff you remember. Um, maybe just kind of, um, I know I always find it interesting when people make, um, audio records of their stories, their family stories. Um, so maybe creating, um, kind of, uh, an oral history of your life would be interesting. Um, in recording that, um, something though, I think when you are spending time in these kind of in between places, I think that, um, it's a, it's a kind of uh, gift to yourself in the future to um, when you have that, when you're in that space to kind of record it so that um, as you get older, as your family grows up and maybe your kids or grandkids or whatever want to hear about your life, here it is, you know. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what we have here. I kind of have this image of in my head of, um, Kind of like, hmm, like a like a lamb or some kind of some kind of animal, like a sheep, um, standing in a field, but at night, uh, beneath the stars, kind of just looking up at them quietly. It's serene. Um, There's no sense of danger. And that's what comes to mind is logically you think you got to be careful. Um, more alert, right? Because it's getting dark and that's when the things come out. But I think that there's this kind of just, um, and I think this is, this really relates to that spiritual immersion. Um, and there's nothing really, you know, the, I know that these things like, uh, sound baths and light baths and things like that have got really popular. Um, but there's nothing like standing in an open space where there's not a lot of light pollution and you can see into, uh, the infinite, right? You feel 
so much a part of the universe in that moment. Um, there's nothing like it. There's nothing that can really compare to that. Um, and I think that, I think that that really kind of ties to this feeling of wanting to, um, have a very profound experience, but also realizing that you're part of something so large that it's incomprehensible. And kind of being able to get lost in that. It takes off a, a lot of the pressure of living when you can come into that remembrance. And so that's kind of what I see. I kind of see that um, maybe, you know, maybe this is what you do. Maybe you go drive somewhere where there's, you know, you can see this, you can see the sky widely. Or, um, you know, or maybe this is something that you use for kind of a guided meditation. Um, experiencing this feeling in an interior space. Okay, so I think that's our reading tonight. I thank you so much for uh, the time you've spent with me. I'm always so honored to bring these messages to you, Aries. And um, if you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps me get into the algorithm. We're growing the channel one person at a time. Um, if you have not subscribed, please think about doing so. Um, you can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next video is coming out. Um, and if you want to leave a comment, I would love to hear from you. I'm always uh, so appreciative of each and every comment and sharing and message and um yeah it's it's a nice feeling to read these things and it really keeps me um going <laughs> making content knowing that it's reaching somebody out there so um i thank you thank you thank you and we'll talk again very soon